Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean. Today we're on location in San Francisco at my buddy Chris's house and we're going to show you how to install a Rocky Mountain Rack. Rocky Mountain Racks went through a brand change and are now Sherpa Equipment Co. For those of you that have been looking for a roof rack that is modular, carries a lot of weight, and is pretty simple, then Rocky Mountain Racks might be for you. The model that I got is for the third gen Toyota 4Runner. It's called the Matterhorn but they make racks for a variety of different vehicles. They make racks for the third gen Toyota 4Runner, the double cab second and third generation Tacomas, Lexus GX 470s, fourth gen 4Runners, first gen Sequoias, and they're currently working on the new RAV4, fifth gen 4Runner, second gen Tundra, single and extended cab Tacomas with Tacoma toppers, and a lot more. All these racks assemble in a similar fashion to the third gen Toyota 4Runner, except for the mounting feet. And although they are similar, there are going to be some differences between the many vehicles as would be expected. If you're looking for more information about these racks, just visit their website where you can learn more about the racks themselves and about the team. So when you receive your Rocky Mountain rack and you unbox everything, you're going to get this paper with the list of contents and the quantities. The instructions for the installation is on their website and you can also email them. So for step one, we're going to first begin by assembling the four rear mounting feet. Each mounting foot is secured to the vehicle with two M6 mounting bolts. Slide these bolts through the washers, the mounting bracket, and into the capture nuts in the roof rack. Do not tighten the feet all the way down at this stage of the install. We have the four rear mounting feet and we're going to use this hardware to secure it. We're going to use the smaller washers for this one as there's two sizes of washers. We're going to use the M6 mounting bolts, these washers, and put them into the stock roof rack capture nuts. Before we get started, we want to remove the stock roof rack and we want to make sure that we leave behind eight of these stock capture nuts in the black roof track. On your factory roof rack, these bolts are a T20 or a Torx 20 and you want to remove these. I actually removed a couple of them down the roof rack and loosen them up so I could pull this piece up and get this end cap out easier. So when I lift up, you'll see there's a little plastic part. And there it goes, flying. Now we got four of these capture nuts in the roof track on each side. In the hole where the bolt goes back in, it would be wise to put a little silicone bead in there so it doesn't leak from there. When you take these bolts out for the first time, you'll notice there's a little blob of silicone or something on there that's gummy to help prevent any leaks through this area. We have our first foot here. We're going to do four of these, two on each side, and in the track here, we have the capture nuts. We have our 10 millimeter bolts with our washer. We're gonna put these through here and we're gonna secure them to this. For right now, I have it loose. I don't wanna tighten it down too much so there's room for adjustment. We're gonna get this done with the other three. For step two, we're gonna assemble the two main cross members. We're gonna slide four carriage bolts into the tracks of each of the main cross members, two on each end. These will be attached to the mounting feet in the next step, and these are gonna secure onto the mounting feet with these lock nuts. Next, we wanna place two main cross members across each set of mounting feet. We're gonna slide the carriage bolts until they align with the holes on the mounting brackets, and we're gonna allow them to drop in. We got our carriage bolts, we're gonna slide them in, and then we wanna line them up with the holes. And then at the bottom, we're gonna put a nylon lock nut. We're not gonna tighten these down all the way. We're still gonna need some room for adjustment. We're gonna do this on both sides. For step four, before we secure the cross members to the mounting feet, we're gonna make sure that it is approximately centered on the vehicle. With the help of a friend, I'm gonna lift the side plate up to the side of the cross member. I'm gonna slide a bolt through the flat washer and the rack side plate and into the tapped holes in the end of the cross member. Each side plate is gonna have two designated slots for the main cross members. 
These slots are going to be shorter than the primary sliding tracks. We're going to repeat this step for both sides of the rack. So for these side plates, to secure them, we're using the bolts and we're inserting them into the threaded area on the cross members. We'll tighten these down just a little bit. So we got the side plates on and we got them secured loosely. We wanted to measure the distance between the end of the foot to the plate. And we got about five and a half inches to this area where the foot ends. We centered it side to side with five and a half inches till the end of the foot. Then we took a look around the vehicle just to make sure that everything looks straight. And now we're gonna move on to the next step. For step six, we're gonna check to make sure that it's aligned perfectly with the curve of the vehicle. And they recommend opening the rear hatch, sliding the rack backwards until it gets close to the door. Once we've checked the clearance for the rear hatch as it opens up, we're gonna tighten the mounting feet to eight foot pounds. And we're gonna do that all the way down the roof rack track. For step seven, we're gonna assemble the front cross member. We're gonna flip the cross member so it is positioned vertically. We're gonna slide four carriage bolts into the topmost track on the long side. We're gonna have two on each end about an inch apart. For step eight, we're gonna assemble the two front lever feet that will be attached to the front cross member. Once we assemble the front mounts, we're gonna attach them to the front cross member. We're not gonna tighten them down all the way during this stage of the installation. We're gonna to need to reposition them in the next step so we want them to be loose. We have the foot. The top of the foot is about flush with the top of this. We have the bracket on with the two carriage bolts and the nuts in this top track. For step 10, we're gonna align the vertical front cross member with its corresponding mounting point in the rack side plate. We're gonna secure it with a quarter inch bolt, flat washer, and then tighten down to 12 foot pounds. For step 11, we wanna position the front leveling feet so that the center of the pad is centered on the ridge of the roof gutter. The rubber pad on the foot needs to sit as level as possible. Once this is done, we're gonna adjust the lever down and we wanna make sure we have a generous amount of pressure pressing against the roof and tighten the nuts down. We're gonna tighten the bolts that connect the front mount to the cross member. The instructions state for it to be in the middle of this area. So we adjusted it a little bit over, got it in the middle, and then secured these nuts. It's got the right amount of pressure on the roof. So we're gonna secure these nuts in place and tighten these down so it locks it in place. For step 12, on a separate cross member, we're gonna slide six carriage bolts into the track. We're gonna align each of the carriage bolts with the corresponding holes in the front fairing, and then we're gonna slide the fairing onto the bolts. Slide six carriage bolts in. Gonna line it up, approximate. Put some washers on here, and then secure it with the nylon lock nuts. And we're gonna tighten down to 10 foot-pounds. We wanna make sure that the ends of the fairing remain even with the end of the cross member. Next, we wanna drop the front fairing into its sliding track at the front of the rack side plates and secure with two bolts and washers on each side. We're gonna slide the fairing down until the rubber strip on the fairing aligns with the point on the tip of the rack side plate. We're gonna tighten these down to 12 foot pounds. For step 15, we're gonna drop in remaining crossbars and secure with four bolts and four flat washers. We're gonna tighten these down to 12 foot pounds. Spacing the crossbars out is gonna depend on where your load is on your rack. So just think about what you're gonna put on there and position the crossbars accordingly. So we got our remaining crossbars in and we secured them with the four bolts and the flat washers. We tightened them down to 12 foot pounds and we spaced them out according to the load that I anticipate on my roof rack. If you have a light bar that you want to put in, on this last cross member, you're going to want to put the longer carriage bolts on the top track. So we got the carriage bolts at the top track here, ready to accept the light bar with these mounts that we're going to use and these little black spacers. For the light bar mount, we have the longer carriage bolt, we have the black spacer, and then to secure the mount to this bolt, we have a washer and a nylon lock nut.
To secure the light bar to the mount, we're going to use the hardware included with the extreme LED light bar. And it's an Allen head. We're going to screw this into the side and secure the light bar. So this is what it looks like all said and done. We have the optional light bar installed and the cross members are in and it looks good. All right, we're done installing our Rocky Mountain roof rack. This is pretty straightforward and it was nice to have the instructions that they gave us. They did a really great job of providing really clear instructions on how to get the job done. But essentially start to get the feet secured get everything kind of loosely put together, start making sure that it's nice and straight, start tightening things down. And with the light bar, you'll want to make sure that you get the longer carriage bolts into that last cross member on the front so you can accommodate the mounting of the light bar. We'll be back with another video to show you how to wire up an LED light bar. I want to give special thanks to my buddy Chris for helping me install this today. With all that said, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. Take care, bye bye, and sick roof rack mods.